Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So in this particular one, actually, we are going to take part two of section C and long answer question, very, very long question. Honestly speaking, it is virtually impossible to complete the paper in three hours, especially for uh, a CMA level student. But uh, still, question is given. It's a pretty long question. And if I, because I have to make you understand also, it will consume a bit of time. But anyway, it's a pretty, pretty long question. Correct. I do not know why such a long questions are given in the examinations. So, institute need to think that they need to actually devise the paper in such a fashion and manner so that a student can, so that the knowledge of the student not only can be tested, but they, they are given what we call time enough to complete the paper too. But anyway, whatever is before us, uh, we are going to do this one. This question is of cash flow statement. Cash flow statement you have done so many times in your earlier phases of education question is tough, really tough, even even though you have done this particular sort of question, but uh, still I would say it's a tough question and within the constraining time period, it is virtually difficult for the student to finish it up. Anyway, just have a look open, please, uh, if you have the question paper before you, pull it out also because it is not very clear, correct? Uh, so equity share capital first item is given to us and you have to take care of this particular fact that this is 2021 correct and current year is given current year is given first and then previous year is given to you so opening balances are towards your right side and closing balances are towards your right hand side uh, towards left hand side sorry and uh, opening balances are towards your right side so equity share capital we have been given general reserve and then profit and loss account again you have to pay attention that opening balance of profit and loss account is negative then you have been given employee stock option outstanding and capital security premium capital grant convertible debentures and these debentures are convertible into equity shares of 25 percent and then you have been given trade payables goodwill last year was nil in the current year it is 15,000 plant and machinery non-current investment, then inventories, trade receivable, less provision for doubtful debts is also given along with that. <clears throat> Lots of items, cash equivalents, and then you have got advanced tax. Correct. And in the advanced tax, they have written here 1,500 being 15% tax on capital gain on investment, on sale of investment. So pretty long question and <clears throat> lots of information is also given that we have to charge depreciation. Actually, it is given depreciation on plant and machinery return off during the year. That means in the current year, they have already written off depreciation of 15%. And further, a fully depreciated machine costing 1 lakh was also discarded. Secondly, you have been given that in the current year, it was decided to value inventory at cost, whereas practice whereas previously the practice was to value the inventory at cost less 10 percent correct previously your practice was to value the investment at 10 percent less than the cost but now in the current year you have decided to bring it to cost however the closing stock on 31st of 3 2021 is correctly valued at cost and besides they have also given one more information that in the current year they have purchased business of y limited for rupees 60,000 and the payment will be made by way of shares of rupees 10 each at a premium of 20%. Correct? And then assets included, whatever assets which we purchased, whatever items which we took off while limited are inventories 26,640, trade receivable 10,000, machine 18,360 and besides, besides that, we took over trade payables of rupees 15,000. Further, it is also given 2,30,000 were written off against the provision for doubtful debts during the year. Correct? And then grant of 10 lakh was amortized in profit and loss account. Compensation received in a suit filed by the company is 90,000 and voluntary separation payment of 50,000 against the general reserve. And one more information that during the current year you received dividend of 2,100 out of which pre-equation dividend is 600 and some investments were sold at a profit of 25% on cost. Some investments were sold at a profit of 25% on cost. So this is the entire information. So now what we have to do in this particular question, 
lots of because I have to show you the complete solution so quite obviously it will consume lots of time so you please also because of space constraining factor you also start what we call writing along with and when the most interesting thing about this particular question see question says that cash flow statement is not required question says that cash flow statement is not required but we have to find out operating profit before working capital changes cash flows from operating activities cash flows from invest investing activities cash flows from financing activities and if we have found out all these three items indirectly it means we have already prepared what we call cash flow statement so i am unable to fathom this particular line anyway these are the things which uh, doesn't look nice actually to be very honest with you uh, especially when it is given for ca final level papers the cma final pay level papers first item is equity share capital what you have to do now please pull out your pen and pencil this is my ardent advice to you if you really want to uh, understand this question quite well so equity share capital account i will prepare equity share capital account correct and in the equity share capital account first of all you write along with me balance brought down balance brought down and you have to be very careful when you bring down the balances opening balance is 5 lakh opening balance is 5 lakh and your balance carried down is equal to 9 lakh 10000 correct 9 lakh 10000 what is your next item next item is your general reserve next item is general reserve so i also prepare a general reserve account in this particular case general reserve account so this is my general reserve account and in the general reserve account actually i bring down the balances by balance brought down that is equal to 250000 and balance carried down will be equal to 210000 you have to be very very cautious when you bring down the balances especially if it is pretty long question then we have profit and loss account if you want to prepare profit and loss account you can prepare okay i will prepare it or you can simply write here cash flows from operating activities cash flows from operating activities cash flows from operating activities Here you write net profit and in order to write net profit, subtract from the closing balance, opening balance, subtract from the closing balance, opening balance. Now what is your closing balance? First of all, let me have a look. Closing balance is 6,61,500. Closing balance is 6,61,500. And from it you subtract opening balance. Opening balance is negative, that is 1,40,000 opening balance is negative correct so your net profit will be equal to 661500 plus 140000 661500 plus 140000 that is equal to as per my calculation 801500 See, my opening balance must be minus 1,40,000 and closing balance is given positive 6,61,000. So, during the current year, we must have had earned profit of 8,1,000 without an iota of doubt. Correct. Then we have in this case, what else? Uh, you have the third item, prof sorry, now the fourth item is employee stock option outstanding. Now, as far as this item is concerned, you need not require to prepare any account to be very honest with you. Because if our employee stock option liability is increased, increasing and if you have done employee stock option plan or share based payment, actually nowadays in share based payment we do it as per India's 103, but wherein we write stock based reserve, uh, uh, reserve etc. Terminology is a little bit different, but earlier we used to write stock option outstanding account. But anyway, even if you are not able to understand that way round, at least you understand this way. If my liability is increasing, that means I must have committed that I am going to what we call give shares to my employees. 
correct? And we know that every year liability may fall or may increase. In this case, actually it is increasing. So I must have had passed an entry. The employees expenses, employees benefit expenses account debit to share outstanding account. Indirectly here it is written employees stock option outstanding account. That means I must have passed an entry like this. Employee benefit expenses account debit to employee stock option outstanding account. Correct? Now, employee benefit expenses will be debited to profit and loss account. So, profit and loss account debit to employee benefit expenses account. Now, if you cut these two items, your entry will be now profit and loss account debit to employee stock option outstanding account. So, that means in the current year, you must have passed an entry profit and loss account debit to employees stock option outstanding account. And amount would be equal to difference of these two that is equal to 2 lakh. So, ultimately, your profit and loss account must have got debited by this. So, you will have to write here, employee stock option outstanding account 2 lakh. Your profit must have got debited. So, actually, we add all these items. Why we add all these items? Because all these are non-cash items. We are simply in the current year debiting the amount, but we are not incurring any expenditure in the current year. So our profit unnecessarily got reduced due to this non-cash nature. So that is the reason we are adding it back. Now the next item, if you will look into the solution uh, or the question, whatever it is, security premium, next item is given to you as 50,000. So I will prepare a security premium account also. Security premium account, okay, I will prepare a little bit of spaces with me. Security premium account. This is security premium account. What is the opening balance here given in the security premium account? If you will see, sec opening balance is nil. Balance brought down is nil. And your closing balance actually is 50,000, correct? Closing balance is 50,000. Lots of time consuming chapter, time consuming question, capital redemption reserve is also given to you, capital redemption reserve, capital redemption reserve, opening balance is given as nil or 1 lakh, opening balance is 1 lakh, opening balance is 1 lakh and balance carried down is equal to balance carried down is equal to this much. See actually generally the creation of capital redemption reserve takes place generally I am simply talking about this particular fact. Actually in this case we had capital redemption reserve. Correct? We had capital redemption reserve and now it is equal to zero. So that means in the current year we must have had passed an entry Capital Redemption Reserve Account Debit to Share Capital Account. Why I am saying actually we must have had passed this particular entry. The reason being is that in this question preference share capital is not given. Capital Redemption concept, Capital Redemption Reserve concept generally arises when we redeem the preference share capital or when we do the buyback of bonus issue. And when, whenever or when we issue actually bonus share to the equity share capital, either of these two things takes place. Is it clear to you or not? Remember one thing, you have done bonus issue so many times. When you make the bonus issue, you utilizes your capital redemption reserve and your share capital increases. Do you remember? So that is the reason. I am analyzing in this particular case in the sense that we must have done some bonus issue and because our capital redemption reserve is increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing, so that means we must have utilized capital redemption reserve for the purpose of bonus issue. So that is why I am telling that this question is a little bit tough for the student. It is very difficult for a student to actually do, to do such deep analysis. That is the problem. Anyway. So, capital redemption reserve account debit to share capital. So, ultimately in the share capital, I will also write capital redemption reserve. That is 1 lakh. 
you can write in bracket bonus issue and this account fortunately got closed so please note it down because i may have to rub it out because i'm not having the required space here and then we have capital grant capital grant is equal to 8 lakh capital grant is equal to capital grant account first of all write here opening balance your opening balance in this case is nil <laughs> Opening balance brought down is nil and your balance carried down in this particular case is 8 lakh. 8 lakh or 10 lakh. Where is capital redemption reserve? Sorry, capital grant. Capital grant is 8 lakh. Actually, I told 10 lakh because below some information was there with respect to capital grant. I remember in point number D, it is written that grant of 10 lakh amortized in profit and loss account. What we mean by amortized? Because most of the time student think amortization, whenever we amortize something, profit and loss account gets debited. That is the general hunch. That is the general notion actually, which we prevail in our mind. That is not the case in fact. That is true only in case of assets or expenses. When you amortize any asset or expenses, then only profit or loss account gets debited. Here capital grant is an income. You, it means you might have received some grant from the government and every year, you, you, every year some portion of that particular uh, grant, you must have decided to take it to your, to your profit or loss account. When every year you take some portion of the grant to the profit or loss account, that means profit or loss account will get credited. So that is also known as amortization of grant. Amortization doesn't mean actually only debiting the profit or loss account. It could also mean crediting the profit or loss account. Correct? So that is a case of income here. Amortization means you are crediting. So you must have passed an entry like this in the current year. Some portion of the capital grant you must have taken to the profit or loss account. So you must have passed this entry and below it is written that 10 lakh worth of capital grant has been amortized. So in the capital grant account, you will write here to profit and loss account 10 lakh. You will write here 10 lakh. Is it clear to you? Because you have written here 10 lakh, your profit and loss account will also get credited. So that means your profit and loss account is great in getting credited, but that's a sort of non-trading sort of niche income. So that is why you will write here capital grant and you will subtract it 10 lakh when you will compute your cash flows from operational activities. And now as far as capital grant is concerned, see here, now you will have to tally your capital grant account. Now capital grant account when you will tally, you will write here by bank. 18 lakh that means you must have received is it equal to 18 lakh yes so that means in the current year you must have received capital grant from the government worth rupees 18 lakh is it clear to you or not so 18 lakh worth of grant ultimately because you have received it you will take it to the financing activity is it clear to you receipt of grant so Uh, financing activity where I should write that is the only problem okay okay I will simply write here F's and later on I will put it towards the financing activity correct and next item here in this particular case is convertible debenture into equity share of 25% so here I will prepare this account debenture account convertible debenture account Convertible debenture account. Right here, convertible debenture account. Now, as far as convertible debentures are concerned, you had in the beginning 2 lakh worth of debentures. You had in the beginning 2 lakh worth of debentures. Correct? And balance carried down, as you can see, is zero. That means these debentures must have been converted into equity shares. But here you have to pay attention. 2 lakh worth of debentures will be converted into equity shares and one equity share is convertible equity shares at 25%. It is not clearly written what is the face value of equity share. Let me also check is it given below. 
Yes, below it is given that one equity share is of rupees 10 each. Anyway, if equity share is 10 each and I'm issuing at 20% premium, 25% premium, sorry, 25% premium. So 25% of 10 will be equal to 2.5. So ultimately 2 lakh divided by 12.5. That is 12.5. So if you will divide 2 lakh by 12.5, it will be equal to 40,000. That means you will issue 40,000. Is it equal to 14 or 16? 16,000 I think so. Let me check. Because 2 lakh divided by 10 is 20,000. So 12.5 must be 16,000. 2 lakh divided by 12.5 is equal to 16,000. It is equal to 16,000. So 16,000 shares you must have issued. 16,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each at the rate of 12.5. It means... So you will write towards the debit side or convertible debenture to share capital 16,000 into 10, 160,000. And you will write here security premium 16,000 into 2.5 into 2.5 will be equal to 40,000. So convertible debenture account will also get closed. However, you have written here two share capital. So towards the credit side of equity share capital, you will write convertible debenture account or simply debenture account, 1,60,000. And towards the debit side of debenture account, you have written two security premium. So now in the security premium account, towards the credit side, you are going to write by debentures, by debentures, 40,000. Is it clear to you? So at this debenture account is also closed now. What is the next item? So many items are there. Next item is trade payable and you will have to prepare in this case due to some or other reason trade payable account also. You will prepare trade payable account also. When you will prepare the trade payable account, the opening balance is 1 lakh. Opening balance, balance brought down is 1 lakh. Correct. And balance carried down is equal to 1,5,000. You write here 1,5,000. Why I am preparing this account, I will let you know after some time. Similarly, in this particular question, I will have to prepare goodwill account also. Goodwill account also I will have to prepare. Now, goodwill and goodwill is an asset. Please take care of this. So, while writing, balance brought down, you have to be careful. Opening balance is nil and your closing balance is 15,000. I'm telling you, when you bring down the balances, that is very important for you to not to do any mistakes. Similarly, next item is plant and machinery. Oh my God, there are so many items. I have become tired now. Plant and machinery account. Plant and machinery account here is 7,65,000. If they would give such a long question, actually they should have had allotted it, I think in my opinion, 25 months. Such a long question it is. Balance brought down. Balance brought down is 7,65,000. You will write here. See, this is the mistake actually I could have committed. Balance brought down is actually 5 lakh. So I will write here 5 and below is 7,65,000. First of all, let me explain a bit of this. Below it is given that depreciation return off on plant is 15%. What does it mean? That means you have already written off depreciation. It means because you have written depreciation, that means when you have reached the end of the year, your plant and machinery, whatever it was, we do not know. Suppose if it is equal to closing balance before depreciation is equal to 100, then your depreciation will be how much at the rate of 15? That will be equal to 15. So closing balance after depreciation will be equal to 85. Isn't it or not? Now if closing balance after depreciation of 15% is 85 and my closing balance which is given in the question is uh, 
seven lakh sixty five thousand. So seven lakh sixty five thousand. If it is closing balance, if it is closing balance, my depreciation would have been how much? Seven lakh sixty five thousand into fifteen divided by eighty five. That must be equal to, I think, one lakh thirty thousand. Seven lakh sixty-five thousand into fifteen divided by eighty-five. That is equal to my calculator is also not working. Into fifteen divided by eighty-five is equal to one lakh thirty-five thousand. So that means in the current year we must have charged a depreciation of one lakh thirty-five thousand. I hope you got this point because they have given us that they have charged. So I will write here by depreciation. One lakh thirty-five thousand. This is my balance carried down. Now, question is also telling us a fully depreciated machinery. There is the machinery, and the cost of the machinery was one lakh. Cost of the machinery is one lakh, and it is fully depreciated. It is fully depreciated. Fully depreciated means whatever is the cost, the depreciation amount is also same. So its written down value is zero. It has been discarded means you sold it for zero. Here discarded basically would mean that you have thrown it out. So logically this depreciation I should write over here, but this one lakh is already included in one lakh thirty five thousand. So I need not require to pass any entry for this. Are you getting my point or not? Because total depreciation which we charge this year is one lakh thirty five thousand. So one lakh must have been included in it. Is it clear to you or not? Secondly, second information. Okay, now first let me. We were till up to this date. Then non current investments are also there. Non current investment. Have you written all these things? Or you want to write? Please write it. I I will require lots of space. That is why I am telling you non-current as non-current investment, non-current investment account, non-current investment account. Balance brought down in the non-current investment account is fifty thousand. And balance carried down in the non-current investment is thirty-five thousand. After this, we have trade receivable. I will prepare trade receivable account also. This is my trade receivable account. In the trade receivable account, opening balance is five lakh eighty-five thousand. You write five lakh eighty-five thousand. Is it clear to you? And then we have closing balance seven lakh ten thousand. So write balance carried down seven lakh ten thousand. Seven lakh ten thousand. Besides, we have provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts is how much? provision for doubtful debts basically is an item of liability that's a different matter that it is shown as a subtraction from data so when you write the balance brought down be careful provision for opening balance is equal to 150000 as far as opening balance is concerned and closing balance is equal to 190000 so you will write, have to write 190000 Then we have been given voluntary separation payment. Voluntary separation payment. I hope you must have had written this at least now. So I will rub it off. Correct. So voluntary separation payment account I will prepare here itself. Voluntary separation payment VSP account. Voluntary separation payment balance brought down is how much? That is sixty five thousand. Correct and balance carried down is equal to one lakh twenty five thousand.
then cash and cash equivalent is given and advanced tax is given and this is the line which we need to take care of except these two we have almost prepared all the accounts now we move over to our this part it was decided to value inventories at cost what does it mean so first of all it means if inventory last year is of 100 if that is the purchase price or cost price purchase price always means the cost price question is telling that till up to last year as per the practice you used to record what we call inventories at less than their purchase price so if inventory last year is of 100 so its recorded price must be equal to 90 and now let me have a look over the last year's inventory where is last year's inventory last year's inventory is 54000 so if last year's recorded amount is 54000 what will be the cost because in the current year we decided to we decided to bring it to cost so that will be equal to 54000 into 100 divided by 90 divided by 90 that is equal to 60000 so that mean an item which is recorded at 50000 because of this what is happening your inventory will increase inventory of last year will increase inventory last year 6000 and it is a gain to you but this gain is accruing to you not because of any trading activity just because of revaluation of inventory anyway because of this gain what will happen towards the debit side of inventory where we have prepared inventory account so many accounts we have prepared have we prepared inventory account or not yet let me see capital redemption reserve trade payable goodwill non-current trade receivable i don't think so we have prepared inventory account is still okay if we haven't prepared i will prepare it now inventory account In the inventory account, our opening balance is how much? In the inventory, inventory account opening balance is 54,000. Balance brought down 54, you will have to write. Then you will have to write the closing balance. What is the closing balance? Closing balance is 95,640. 95,640. Now because of this entry, I will write here profit and loss account 6000. Actually my opening inventory will increase. But it is a non-trading income, it is affecting PNL. So it will be subtracted from what we call net profit. So less inventory revaluation. Revaluation of inventory because it must have increased our profit unnecessarily. revaluation of inventory 6000 you will have to sub subtract 10 lakh capital grants will have to be subtracted Now what else is there? In this particular question, it is also given that on 31st of March, the business of Y Limited was purchased for 60,000 payable in fully paid equity shares. See here, I have to do lots of working. I'm trying to tell you, please note down it. Otherwise, it will become very difficult for me to make you understand. Okay, I will write off this. It's a pretty long question. Now pay attention here. Just wait. Actually, examinations are on.
I am really sorry, but I can't help it. I have to take care of problem of every student. Correct. So that is the reason. Because I have kept my mobile there and it is clicking down and that is the reason. I have to take care of two things. We have so plant and machinery I was talking about. Correct. So plant and machinery account. In this question, what is happening? We are purchasing some assets. Which are the assets which we have purchased as per the question? If you will look over here. In the question, please look into the solution which you are having. You have purchased some assets and that is the only problem. Which are the assets which you have purchased in the question? That is inventories. You have purchased inventories. How much inventories? Inventories which you have purchased is equal to 26,640. Besides that, as per the question, you have taken over trade receivable to the extent of 10,000. Trade receivable to the extent of 10,000. And you have taken over plant and machinery worth rupees machine, that is 18,360. And you have taken over trade payable also. Amount of trade payable is equal to 15,000. Now, if you will notice it net assets will be equal to 60,000 you are taking over debt assets of the other company correct when you will take over the net assets what entry you are going to pass you will pass the entry net assets account debit to vendor account as per accounting standard you will pass the entry net asset account debit to vendor account because this much payment you need to pay to the vendors and how you have paid to the vendors your next entry will be vendor account debit you will pay to the vendor 60,000 but how you are paying you are telling that we will make the payment but we will issue the shares at uh, uh, at 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 it is written in the question 60,000 payable in fully paid equity shares of 10 each at a premium of 20% see actually I have kept the question seats now in front of me correct so that I need not require to flip through it. So that is the reason. So vendor 60,000 and you can look into the question directly. So two share capital. So we have to pay. It is given in the question that we are paying the shares of rupees 10 each at a premium of 20%. So two security premium. So how many shares I will have to pay? I will multiply 60,000. I will divide 60,000 by 12. 10 plus 20% premium. So that will let me know actually how many shares I am going to issue. I think it is 5,000. So 5,000 shares of 10 each at the rate of 12 I will issue. So 5,000 into 10 will be equal to 50,000 vendor company account debit to share capital and 5,000 into 2 will be equal to 10,000. So these are the two entries which you have passed. Actually first entry is not affecting any account which we are preparing. Leave it. Next entry is vendor account debit to share capital to security premium. See here, first of all, in the share capital account which you prepared, you will have to write by vendor or by net assets you can simply write if you want to. Vendor account debit to share capital. So I will simply write vendor account 50,000 because 50,000 worth of shares we are offering. And security premium account is also getting affected due to this entry. Security premium is getting credited. So towards the credit, credit side of security premium, I will write by vendor 10,000. And security premium account will also get tally. But at the same time, you have to take care of this particular fact that you have acquired some assets. You have acquired inventories. You have acquired trade receivable. You have acquired plant and machinery. And you have taken over their trade payables. So in these four accounts, something, some adjustment need to be done. For example, in the plant and machinery, I will write here two vendors because from vendors we are acquiring these assets. That is 18,360. Similarly, in the trade risk, in the inventories account, inventories account we have just prepared. In the inventories account, I will write here two vendors. We have purchased inventory to the extent of, to the extent of 26,640. 
26,640, correct? And besides that, inventories, plant and machinery and trade receivable, trade receivable 10,000. So in the trade receivable account also I will write vendors, 10,000. When we are purchasing our assets will increase, I will have to debit it. Similarly, in the trade payable account, which I had prepared earlier, in the trade payable account, because now trade liability will increase, I will write here buy vendors. 15,000 worth of creditors we have taken up. That is how we are going to post this figure. Then further it is given that debtors of 230,000 were written off against provision for doubtful debts during the year. Actually, problem is that you have been given answer from a particular method. Actually, there are alternative ways of solving this particular question. It is So that is the reason why I am saying so that institute must give the answer from all the facets, from all the possible alternative solution. Because there is one solution that I can simply ignore this particular line. But anyway, I will consider this line because it is given in the question. I will prepare provision for doubtful debts. In the provision for doubtful debts, I will write here. We have written off some debtors. So I will write here 2,30,000. In the current year, I must have written off some debtors, actually some bad debts it means. Debtors of 2,30,000 was written off against the provision for doubtful debts during the year. So that means now you, whatever balance is there, this balance will, will reflect that in the current year, you must have provided this much of amount for provision for doubtful debts. I think it is 2,70,000. So 2 lakh 70 ultimately you are going to add to your profit and loss account. Provision for doubtful debts. Because when you will make some provision for doubtful debts, your profit and loss account will get reduced. But it is a non-cash item. So you will have to add it. After this item, we have in this case... Grant rupees 10 lakh amortized in profit and loss account, we have already taken that. And then it is given compensation received in a suit filed by company 90,000. When we receive any compensation, correct, first of all it will be subtracted because it is treated as a non-trading income. Compensation received, 90,000 you will subtract it, but ultimately it is an income. Ultimately, you will have to show it separately as an extraordinary item later on. Later on, I will also add it. It will be subtracted and it will be added back for computing cash flows from operating activities. Correct? Okay, I will write it here separately. Extraordinary items plus compensation. So, compensation 90,000. Later on, I am going to add it also. Is it clear to you or not? Then... In this question, what else is given to us? Voluntary separation payment 50,000 adjusted against the general reserve. Voluntary separation payment adjusted against the general reserve. We have prepared voluntary separation payment account, I think so. Voluntary separation payment. Here it is. So, I will write here by general reserve. General reserve is 50,000. What does it mean that we adjust it? See here, it means we must have passed an entry, voluntary separation payment account debit. Correct? And we, sorry, we must have made some payment during the year and that is adjusted against the general reserve. Instead of adjusting it against the profit and loss account, we adjusted it against the general reserve. That is why I will write here by general reserve. And in the general reserve account, I am going to write here, where is general reserve account? Here it is general reserve account. So I will write here voluntary separation payments, 50,000. And finally, we have been given... Dividend of rupees 2500 which included pre-acquisition dividend. See actually, first of all, you will have to pass the entry bank account debit to dividend account. 
डिविडेंड रिसीव्ड अकाउंट डिविडेंड रिसीव्ड अकाउंट डेट इज इक्वल टू टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड वी हैव रिसीव सम डिविडेंड दिस डिविडेंड अल्टीमेटली विच वी हैव रिसीव्ड ऑन अवर इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी रिफ्लेक्टेड एज एन आइटम ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी लेटर ऑन वेन आई विल राइट द इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी ओके आई विल राइट हियर इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटीज डिविडेंड रिसीव टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड करेक्ट दिस इज माई इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी नाउ क्वेश्चन दैट आउट ऑफ दिस डिविडेंड प्री एक्विजिशन डिविडेंड इज डिविडेंड अकाउंट डेबिट टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड प्री एक्विजिशन डिविडेंड प्री एक्विजिशन डिविडेंड इज ट्रीटेड एज ए कैपिटल इनकम करेक्ट सी एक्चुअली वेन आई मेक सम इन्वेस्टमेंट समवेयर Of course, it means I am incurring some cost. If I am purchasing your company share, that means I must have incurred some cost. And if I am receiving some dividend out of you, and if out of that dividend, some dividend is pre-acquisition dividend, then question says that standards AS thirteen says that such dividend must be credited to what we call your investment account. That means indirectly such dividend. instead of being taken to profit or loss account should be used in reducing the cost of the investment so pre acquisition dividend will be credited to investment account and question says that out of this 2100 600 worth of dividend is your pre acquisition dividend you will write it over here and rest automatically means is post acquisition dividend and post acquisition dividend you will always take to profit or loss account so due to this entry what will happen one your profit or loss account will get reduced because in the current year you must have credited 1500 to profit and loss account so you will subtract dividend 1500 post acquisition dividend and 500 worth of dividend you have written here investment so in the investment account non current investment account we have prepared non current investment account in the non current investment account you will write here by dividend received so by dividend received it will instead of crediting it this dividend to profit or loss account we are crediting it to investment account indirectly it means it will reduce our cost further in this question it is also given that uh, some investment were sold at a profit of 25% some investments were sold at a profit that been during the year very very important that been during the year there is some sale of investment some sale of investments there is some sale of investment and there is some profit also how much profit we must have earned i have to find it out you cannot find out directly don't think that you are expert enough to find out with the help of 25% you might think that investment in the beginning is 15 now it is 35 so 15000 it is coming down by that when we must have sold the investment for 15000 so compute profit on it no because in this question you have been given this line which i was telling you earlier under advanced tax it is written that including 1500 being 15% tax on gain on sale of investment that been in the current year you must have sold some investment you must have earned some gain or profit on it and on that you must have paid 15% capital gains tax so i can find out the profit or gain because it is given that we have paid 15% capital gains tax 15% capital gain tax we must have paid cgt capital gains tax on the gains or profit so whatever profit was there we must have paid 15% on it and that must be equal to how much we have to find out is it clear to you it is given that 1500 is the profit capital gains tax at the rate of 15% on profit is 1500 1500 is given so now i can find out the amount of profit that must be equal to 1500 into 100 divided by 15 so that mean i must I must have earned a profit of ten thousand on sale of investment. So now I have been able to find out that profit 
must be equal to 10,000. And now I can find out the amount of sales by balancing the account. So, there is profit. So, profit will be debited to non-current investment account 10,000. So, whatever this is non-current investment account. Dividend received is 600. Don't forget this. Dividend received is 600. Pre-equation dividend. So, now whatever figure I will get, correct? Whatever figure I will get, that will be equal to my profit, my sale of investment. Isn't it or not? So, 60,000 minus 35,000 minus 600. 24,400 must be my sale of investment. 24,400 must be my, I must have sold the investment for 24,400. That is the point which you need to understand. Is it clear to you or not? So now in this particular question, opening and, besides opening and closing balance, this profit which you have written over here, that will be subtracted from the PL account which you are preparing to find out your cash flows from operational activities. So, here I will subtract less profit on sale of investment. Profit on sale of investment. Profit on sale of investment is 10,000. I will subtract it. Correct, number one. Then second, besides the profit of non-current investment, dividend received I have already written. Correct, dividend received. If I will prepare a dividend received account, I will write here to investment account. I need to require to prepare dividend received account. Now, sale of investment. So, again, this is a case of investing activity and investing activity, sale of investment. So, I will write here sale of investment, sale, investing activities we are writing here, sale of investment 24,400. These are investing activities, correct? And then, so we have posted this, we have posted this dividend received. If you want to prepare dividend received account, you can prepare, you will write over there to investment. Dividend received account will automatically get closed, no problem, correct? Now, as far as investment account is concerned, that is over. 1,500 we have subtracted from profit already, correct? 1500 fine 600 we have taken to this dividend received 2100 we have already considered now so this line is also over that means whatever was given below we have now done all the adjustment whatever is given below correct so now we are in a position to tally these accounts so let me now tally it so as far as equity share capital is concerned if I am going to tell it, what will be the situation here in the uh, equity share capital account? In the equity share capital account, if you are going to tell it, where will you get the balance? You are getting a balance in equity share capital to the extent of 1 lakh. You will write it bank. That is equal to 1 lakh. That is equal to 1 lakh. 9 lakh 10, 9 lakh 10,000, correct? What is this 2 lakh which we had written? Nine lakh 10, let me check. 7 lakh 60 plus 50, 1 lakh. So this 1 lakh will be your financing activity and uh, these are my investing activity and my financing activity they have written here. So, I will write here financing activity. Share capital, issue of share capital. Issue of share capital 1 lakh. And there was one more financing activity at that time. I was telling that I would write it later on. Could you let me know? Capital grant. I have I have written here F also if you remember. 18 lakh. This 18 lakh is your another financing activity. So, we got this answer. In fact, there is no other financing activity in this question. So, this answer is correct. Correct capital grants. 
18 lakh. So your financing activity is correct, as I told you. Correct. Now we will have to check now investing activity. As far as investing activities are concerned, here we are receiving the payment. And now equity share capital account is closed. I will close now general reserve. 2,60 and minus 250. So that means in the current year I must have transferred 10,000 to general reserve. So I will add general reserve to my profit and loss account. General reserve 10,000. Then we have in this case general reserve account is also closed. Security premium is also closed. Capital redemption reserve account is also closed. Capital grant account is also closed. Convertible debenture account is also closed. This account is also closed. Now trade payable account. When I will balance trade payable account, opening balance is 1,15,000, 1 plus 15, and closing balance is 1,5,000. That means there is decrease of decrease in trade payable is taking place in the current year to the to the extent of 10,000. So decrease in See, actually, when you will compute your cash flows from operating activities, correct? Ultimately, you will, you will have to do the adjustment for working capital component items. So, you will write here decrease in trade payable. If trade payable would decrease, you are going to add, correct? 10,000. If trade pay, sorry, if trade payable would decrease, you will have to subtract extremely sorry extremely sorry because trade payable are decreasing so if trade payable are decreasing means in the current year you must have made some payments so that is why they are decreasing so you will write 10000 and then there is goodwill also now in this question there is very interesting point very very interesting point actually Where is net assets? In the question, I have written here net asset, extremely sorry actually. In the question, this net asset amount is actually 60 minus 75 minus how much it is? Is it 40,000? 26,640. Plus 10,000, plus 18,360, minus 15,000. Actually, this net asset total is 40,000. Extremely sorry. Correct? At a time, I have written here 60,000. It is 40,000. However, we are supposed to pay to the vendor 60,000. So, your entry will be net assets account debit, goodwill account debit 20,000 vendor account 60,000. This is the entry you will pass. Extremely sorry. Correct? So, when you will write in the goodwill account, where is goodwill? In the goodwill account, you will write here to vendor. That is 20,000. And now you will balance it. That means you had 20,000 worth of goodwill, now it is 15,000. So, in the current year, you must have written off 5,000 worth of goodwill, it means. So, this goodwill will be added, goodwill written off. That is 5,000 worth of goodwill you will add it for computing your cash flow from operating activities. Trade payable account is now closed. Goodwill account is now closed. Non-current investment we had closed already. Trade receivable account. Now, similarly, trade receivable account. See here, you had 5,85,000, 5,85,000 worth of trade receivables, 585, 10,000. And now it is how much? Now it is 7,10,000. Less 7,10,000. 1,25,000. This 1,25,000 is increase will be considered as increase because your opening balance is 595 you can say closing balance is 7 lakh 10 so if debtors would increase in fact trade receivable would increase you will write here plus sorry now you will write minus increase in debtors 
increase in trade receivables 125000 125000 you will write here minus increase in debtors will be subtracted debtors account is also over trade receivable account is also over provision for doubtful debts is also over now we are left up with inventories if I will compute the amount of inventory, again it will be increase, but how much? 95,640 minus 54,000 minus 6,000 minus 26,640. And this calculator is very problematic. 95,640 minus 54 minus 6,000 minus 26. 640 that is 9000 so this 9000 is increase is it clear to you this 9000 again you will take it over here and again you will write here increase in inventories that is 9000 and you will subtract it so Inventory account is also closed. Anything else? No. And voluntary separation payment. Now voluntary separation payment 1,75 minus 65. That means in the current year we must have made a payment of 1,10,000. We must have make, made a payment of 1,10,000 to bank. Voluntary separation payment will be reflected as extraordinary item and you will write VSP 1,10,000. Is it clear to you? So first you will add all these things then finally add these two items and then do the adjustment to find out your what we call uh, profit and loss, cash flows from operating activities before working capital and after working capital. And uh, voluntary separation payment account is also get closed. Now we come over to plant and machinery account. Let us see in the plant and machinery account what we have got. Plant and machinery account, you write 381, 381640. This will be your balancing figure. Two bank. So that means as far as this item is concerned, see these are our investing activities. These are our investing activities. Actually lots of messages in between today I am receiving, that is the problem. So purchase of plant and machinery you will write. Purchase of plant and machinery is how much? 381640. 381640. Correct? And under the investing activity, you will write purchase. Three, purchase of plant and machinery 381640. You will write dividend received 2100. Sale of investment 24100. And don't forget to write capital gains tax. Capital gains tax which we pay generally is reflected over here is it clear to you capital gains tax which we have paid 1500 we are going to write it over here and capital gains tax ultimately you will also debit to your profit or loss account so now let me check because as far as your investing activities are concerned, we will have to check it now. 381640 plus 1500. So total payments on account of investing activity are 383140 minus 2100 minus 24400 356640. It is correct. So your this answer is also correct. Correct. So we have been able to find out the answers. And you can find out at least both these answers very easily. See, operating profit before working capital changes is 44,000 and cash flows from operating activities 80,000. That means you will add all these items where it has gone. 
right you will add to the net profit all these items plus minus all these items you will get operating profit before working capital changes correct and then you add all this item then you will get operating profit after working capital adjustments so no other account is remaining and on our part we have done this question in a manner as possibly as possible to so as to easily comprehend correct of course today as i told you i was very tired and because of the fact that lots of things i have to do simultaneously we have to take care of the students queries also we have to do this this particular session also so it is it has already consumed a lot of time the reason being is that we have to make you understand also lots of concepts were there in this particular question correct so you note it down don't ask for sheets and all i haven't solved it i am simply solving it in the class itself so uh, directly i am solving correct so that is the reason it is consuming a time there is another one more long question honestly speaking again it will consume time but i must say and request the institute to please take care of this particular fact but I, it seems actually they have taken some measures because when you will compare the 21 paper with the 22 you find that 22 paper was much easier in comparison to this particular paper and moreover these questions are of no use to be put in the examination now especially if you have completely segmented and made your what we call course in the light of NDS, there is no point in giving what we call such questions. Such questions used to be very important during our times, no doubt about that. Anyway, after that, section four will not, uh, section four is easy, honestly speaking. This question looks tough, but it is very easy. And section five will be wrapped up in one day. And five and six I will wrap in one day because six is already theoretical question. So only section five I need to be done. And this is one question, case study question, but this question is similar is already there in my notes under India S33, correct? So, on such count, we take leave of you today because I cannot exceed the class for more than one hour because I have to take the next session now. So, shall meet you in the, uh, shall meet you tomorrow then.